technically the grove is a 10 acre tailgating area blanketed by magnificent oak, elm, and magnolia trees. In reality, the Grove on a game day is an experience. It's bordered on the streets of decadence and debauchery, football and elegance. But it's great for the old and young alike. For more on that, here's Jordan. All right, boys, let's go scatter to gun empty, cluster right Zorro, 374, dragon smoke, alert, whiskey. All right, on one on one, ready? Let's go, hurry, 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 ready, ready. Hey, hot, hot! Oh! Hot route, hot route, you gotta see that! That might look a little familiar to Ole Miss and Arkansas fans. Both struggled being efficient throwing the football last week, and if they're gonna win tonight, they gotta overcome some issues with drops, inexperienced receivers, and communication, and I feel their pain. I bet Cole found the food somewhere in the Grove. Not just about quarterbacks today, guys. We got two running backs that are ready to eat. Rakeem Board for Arkansas, Scotty Phillips for Ole Miss. They're going to be looking to eat up yards for both of these teams tonight. And the best thing about the Grove, plenty to eat all night long. Easy there, big fella. From Oxford, Mississippi, welcome to SEC Saturday night. Matt Luke's Rebels taking the field here at home against Arkansas. And so the party from the Grove has moved into the stadium. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. What is wrong with you two? You got to see the hot route. Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't care how young you are. The guy blitzes. You got to be ready for the ball. That you was need, not on me. You need better receivers. Uh, these two programs need a win. It seems odd here in week two, a game between two teams that are unranked to say this is a must-win game. But for these programs aiming for the postseason, that sixth win, it feels like they got to get a win today to get there. You really have to for two reasons. In developing young and in inexperienced talent, confidence is everything. If you don't start the season with it, it's really tough to get it back in this league and bowl games. For recruiting, when you're not winning SEC championships or competing for them, you got to recruit and that bowl game goes so far. It feels like if one of these teams doesn't get it tonight, a win, they might not get there. Margin of error is really slim for both of these teams, and there was a lot of error from the quarterback position, no matter who you were, last week. Yeah, Arkansas started with a win, but it was unimpressive. Ole Miss went on the road to Memphis and lost. Can we see better quarterback play tonight? I think we can. On the Arkansas side, they got to figure out who it's going to be. Ben Hicks can run that offense efficiently, but it's not dynamic, and Nick Stark will make it the more talented. We don't know if he can run the offense the way that Arkansas and Chad Morris wants it, and if you're Ole Miss and Matt Corral, you were one for ten on third down against Against Memphis you've got to find ways to get this quarterback easy throws on first and second down so they can get the tempo going because that's how they're successful on offense I don't know if I've ever seen this before but last week against Portland State Arkansas started a brand new starting 11 all Ooh. the way across the board Arkansas now Rakeem Boyd is a guy who has had some success for 100 yard games and it seemed like the ground game was something they could lean on last week. Yeah, the former last chance U-star really is going to have his chance this year to make a huge impact and show that he's one of the best running backs in this entire conference. He's got size. He's got speed. And if you get in front of this running back, he's going to run you over and make you pay for it. I think he's the best player on the entire football field. So as Arkansas figures out this quarterback situation, I bet they're going to lean heavily on Rakeem Boyd tonight. So see if Ole Miss can slow him down. Ole Miss brought two new coordinators in in the offseason, including Mike McIntyre on the defensive side. Let's go down to the field. Cole Kublik. Defense looks a lot better now. Time I thought it looked a little bit better last week, and it's a better fit. You have a guy like Kadir Shepard that was buried down inside, taking on double teams between tackles and tight end a year ago. He'll be able to stand up and roam, be a little bit more free. Benito Jones down inside will be able to create space, shoot some gaps a little bit more than he did last season. Overall, I feel like it's a better fit and I thought they performed better a week ago they're going to be another performance that they're going to need to be strong with tonight against Rakeem Boyd and the Hawks all right Cole thank you great job great job clearing out all the cookies in the tent too Arkansas won the tent uh, won the toss they have elected to defer Chad Morris's team a very lethargic victory against Portland State last week at home this is a team that won just two games last year didn't win a single conference game he Led the rebuild at SMU. Can he do the same in Fayetteville? Time will tell.
Jerry and Ely, the multi-talented star set to receive for Ole Miss. He won't have a chance. And the Rebels will bring out Matt Corral in this Ole Miss offense. Corral played in four games last year, protected his red shirt, a freshman All-America in the preseason from Football Writers Association of America. Had some great coaches, NFL stars, that really taught him how to prepare for the next level and was committed to both USC and Florida before eventually signing with Ole Miss. He's running a Rich Rodriguez offense. Longtime head coach is the other coordinator that Matt Luke brought on board in the offseason. Scotty Phillips is the running back next to Corral, and he'll get a touch on his own read to start things off and a positive play for Ole Miss. Bumper pool with the stop for Arkansas. Get used to that name. Keep an eye on the tempo here. Positive plays, especially on first and second down, lead to the tempo for Ole Miss, and this offense is predicated on it. They didn't have a whole lot of success on first down last week. Corral pulls it back, and now he's flushed. And on the run, just a tick behind his wide receiver, Elijah Moore. Communication issues uh, crept up for both of these teams last week. Is that something you expect week one? You expect it a little bit, but that's one thing we talked to Matt Corral and Rich Rodriguez about. A lot of times the offensive linemen weren't getting all the calls or hearing the correct call. And if you can't get things going pre-snap, you have no chance post-snap. And that's what we saw last week against Memphis. Young wide receivers for both sides. Here's Arkansas bringing pressure. And on the slant, it's a drop. Dontario Drummond got his hands on it, but couldn't bring it in. Pair of pass plays, neither one productive. And Ole Miss will go three and out on this, just as they did regularly last week against Memphis. They went three and out on their first three possessions. They only picked up nine yards on their first 11 plays. And this is a tough catch. Low and right down the center line. Now, trust me, I know it looks like he should have caught it, and he should have, but on a slant route, breaking in, that's a tough one for a receiver to slow down, square up, and get that while running full speed. Here's Traylon Burks. Burks is trying to find a seam. And he'll take it out near the 30-yard line for the first touch for Arkansas. 50-yard punt, 12 on the return. You've heard plenty of grad transfers at quarterback being influential and impactful players in college football this year, where Chad Morris has a pair of them. He's got both Ben Hicks and Nick Starkle that he can play at quarterback. Hicks was a record-setting quarterback at SMU. His mom was a tennis player. She was ultra competitive. He said, I get my drive from her. And he was highly regarded coming out of high school. Waco Midway High School, where he grew up as a Baylor Bears fan, ended up setting passing records at SMU under Chad Morris. Ben Hicks, the SMU grad transfer at quarterback for Arkansas and play action on the first play. Hicks on the run and fires incomplete. Josiah Cody chased him towards the sideline. This is something that we saw last hey. week. A ton of pressure on Ben Hicks. 37% of his dropbacks, he was moving under duress. But also, that affected him when he had a clean pocket. He escaped a little too early sometimes. So keep an eye on what he does with a clean pocket this week. And now second and ten, and they try to run it straight ahead. No luck with Rakeem Boyd, who's only able to find three. Boyd coming off of a 114-yard touchdown performance last week against Portland State. Coatney being impactful on back-to-back -back plays for the Rebels. A linebacker blitz up the middle there. Tough to handle that sometimes in gap scheme because those pullers are coming around and don't get their eyes up field fast enough. Traylon Burks, Trey Knox, and Mike Woods. Two freshmen and a sophomore, part of this young wide receiving core on the field for Arkansas. The tight end is Cheyenne O'Grady, seeing action for the first time this season. Pressure coming again. Hicks gets hit from behind and lets go a strike that is knocked away at the last moment, and Trey Knox goes to the turf. Jalen Julius was able to separate man from ball, and Arkansas will have to punt it away. And Ole Miss brought pressure to go man coverage, single high. Hicks has pressure off the edge, but that is actually a great ball to the true freshman Trey Knox on the outside. A really tough catch, but you can see the pressure here on the left side by Dante Evans just replacing Momo Sonogo. 
And that ball is exactly where it needs to be, but not easy to come down with it, taking a hit like that. And to clarify, it was Armani Linton from his free safety spot who came in to knock the ball loose. Sam Loy will handle the punting duties to start this week. Elijah Moore asks for a fair catch. And after a bobble, is able to gather it. 51-yard punt from the Vandy transfer Loy. Matt Corral on first down wants to rip it loose. He does, and it's a first down to Elijah Moore. And Tom, a true freshman left tackle, Nick Brecker checks into the game. Good in protection here on the left side, and a really good clean pocket and accurate ball by Matt Corral. Just what they needed to get things going. Once again, can Ole Miss capitalize and find rhythm with a first down? And it doesn't look like it because Scotty Phillips gets tossed for a loss of two. Melvin Aguim, who's now playing on the inside, is able to make the stop. So Ole Miss off schedule again. This is now second and 12. Rich Rodriguez offenses pride themselves and being able to move fast, keeping things simple. It actually applies to both offenses we'll see tonight. And once again, it's Scotty Phillips. And he's able to find five. Tom, you mentioned getting on schedule, staying on schedule. In my opinion, this is the part that's got to go. If you're going to stay on schedule, you have to have some sort of a run game consistently that you can lean on. Well, that won the case. And maybe the issue is able to convert this one and breaking free is Ontario Drummond. Drummond with the extra effort. And a junior from Laurel, Mississippi, is able to turn that into a 26-yard catch and run. This is one thing Corral does really well. Throw on the run, and now you can feel the energy. You can feel the momentum, and here comes the tempo. Phillips, left side, able to find nothing. Aguim is there again. Just a really easy concept smash, a hitch on the outside, a corner on the inside, and it was a tight window, but Corral put it exactly where he needed to, and Drummond did the rest. This is an Ole Miss offense, which was fifth in the country in passing last year with Jordan Ta'amu and three wide receivers now in the NFL. Corral pulls it back. On the run, complete. It's Drummond again. Why is Matt Corral so good throwing on the run versus standing still? You know, I asked him, did you play a lot of sports growing up? Because oftentimes when you see a guy that can change his arm angle, usually a baseball player, and he was, he's just a natural thrower of the football and has that knack to throw better off balance than he really does on balance. He said, my dad was all over me. There's no sitting still growing up. I was always playing something, whether it was soccer, baseball, football. Corral pulls it back from Ely, a little ball fake and a hurdle. And he picks up a first down just outside the goal line on an 11-yard run. And they are going quick again, right on top of the ball. Tripped up in the backfield, Ely gets stopped. And this will be the 12th play of this drive for Ole Miss. They found their rhythm, huh? Boy, what a way to bounce back from going one for 10 on third down last week in an offense that just couldn't get going. The ground game has really opened things up. Ely gets hit in the backfield, has to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. And here, when you're a team that goes tempo and you struggle sometimes down the low red zone, just leaning on guys and going man-to-man -man and getting pushed. Here's where the quarterback run comes into play. And here's where getting Matt Corral outside the pocket and on the move is what I do. He's got Scotty Phillips, the veteran, in the backfield with him. Little sprint out run. And it is caught for Ole Miss touchdown. Elijah Moore. How's that for a confidence-boosting drive? Just a simple sprint out. You got Elijah Moore man-to-man. -man. You clear out the outside receiver, give him some space. And 
he's really emerging as their big time go to wide receiver. Kind of like the NWO guys we've had in the past. He'll get a belt. They still have that championship belt hanging in the wide receiver's room. Luke Logan punches through the point after. Let's take it down to the goal line. Pylon Cam will show you clean catch and an early lead for Ole Miss. Fourth and 25. It's on lateral. Arkansas keeps it going. And he has the first down. Arkansas wins it in overtime. Cornelius comes into the backfield. They give him the ball. Cornelius wow. scores it. 34 yards out, and it's good. They will come back and win it. Phillips again. And the Rebels have the lead on a five-yard touchdown run. So, yeah, this series has been nip and tuck over the last four seasons. And with two programs with a slim margin of error, you can see how one play could change the direction. After the touchdown, the Ole Miss kickoff. A good special teams coverage on Demian Warren and some extra pushing and shoving on the sideline. Hello. They split out Ben Hicks. It'll be Rakeem Boyd in the Wild Hog. And he's running behind Demian Warren to the right side. John Haynes was able to dial in on it. Only a gain of three on first down. That took a little while to, to get going there. Rakeem Boyd looked like he was about seven, almost eight yards deep there. That Wildcat's got to be a little closer, a little closer to that jet sweep so it hits quickly. Can't have that take too long. Ben Hicks directs Cheyenne O'Grady. And they go right back to Boyd. Boyd able to slither through the first would-be tackler. And they got submarine at the end after a gain of 10. You guys mentioned how to get the run game going. Offensive coordinator Joe Craddock told me before the game that Wildcat was something that they want to implement and want to try to get a little bit of a different look going. But keep an eye on the... Here's a quick snap again. Get up ended is Rakeem Boyd. This is a big drive for Ben Hicks because Nick Starkle will play. We've talked to Chad Morris and his coaching staff. This is still a competition. They want to go with the guy that's getting the best chance to win, but if this offense doesn't get going on this drive, I think we see Starkle next drive. It's a big first down run there by Boyd. Starkle, the Texas A&M transfer, out of Argyle, Texas, lost the job to Kellen Mond last year. He was the starter on opening day two years ago for Texas A&M. On second and two, Wild Hog again, and that one is dropped. Sam Williamson almost falling for that one. It's a loss of three, and the Land Sharks show up here in the first quarter. Watch the depth of Boyd. I keep harping on it, but he is about, oh, six yards a little more, and that pressure just gets to him before he has a chance to get going. This has to hit quicker. The hesitation and the depth Right. A little too much. And without the jet sweep action, what's yeah, to keep nothing, anybody honest? Nothing holds that guy there. Williams runs back on the field late for Ole Miss. Third down five. Quick to the outside. That's complete. Diving forward, Devois Whaley. If he kept his feet, may have been gone. Instead, it's nine yards before he hit the ground. That is a great read, a great answer for pressure. But man, if that ball is a foot higher, he's off to the races. I mean, Hicks did the best he could falling away. But if he can keep his feet there, he's got one guy to beat, and that's a touchdown. Two tight ends stacked on the right side for Arkansas. O'Grady and Gunner. Hicks pressure. And there's Sam Williams again. Quarterback sack, it's a loss of four, and that's how the first quarter will come to an end here at Vaught Hemingway. That's the end of the first quarter. Ole Miss put together a lengthy drive the second time they touched the ball, and Matt Corral was able to throw a touchdown pass to Elijah Moore. That's all the scoring early, 7-0 Rebels.
Yeah, the Grove, uh, it's a pretty good time down there. Didn't disappoint, did no, it? No, not at all. Rarely is the bar set high and met. Hicks hands it out to Whaley. And Devois Whaley is able to pick up a couple. Senior from Beaumont, Texas. Second string behind Rakeem Boyd. May also see Chase Hayden in the backfield for Arkansas. Third down, 12. Four-man rush. Hicks fires the outside. Great coverage by Jalen Jones, a junior from Allen, Texas. They were trying to find Trey Knox. That's the right place to go with the ball, but the pressure forces Hicks to step up, move to his right, and he's late on this throw, trying to work a one-on-one -on -one route, come back by Trey Knox. And if that ball is out a step sooner, on time in rhythm, he's got a chance there. It's just a little late because of that pressure off the left side. Sam Lloyd trying to improve, started his career at Vanderbilt, then went to Colorado, a native of beautiful San Clemente, California. Another sky-high punt. This one at least carries inside the 15, and Elijah Moore takes the fair catch. Two-man backfield, and Ely had to swing around to find it. Able to take it to the 20. This guy's got elite speed. It's why the Major League Scouts fell in love with him. They'll be playing center field in the spring for the Rebels. I love the quick, easy throws on first down that Rich Rodriguez has dialed up this entire game so far for Matt Corral. Couldn't get anything going on first last week, and a lot more productive this week. Matt Corral said he wasn't nervous going into his first start last week against Memphis, but he was maybe overly excited. Speaking of excited, let's go to the studio. Here's Dari. All right, Tommy, thank you much. Let's keep an eye on what's happening, of course, in Austin. We're watching. Texas had an interception started inside the LSU five and in four plays could not get in. The Tigers stopped and they lead Whoa, loser. what a play. Matt Corral finds Elijah Moore. That's that ability to throw on the run that we love. And a great play design. We've seen Elijah Moore on the quick option route this time. He turns it up down the sideline on a wheel route, and Corral, under pressure, getting hit, delivers a dime. That's why they love this kid. That's where all the excitement came from. And now nothing doing with Snoop Connor. Another sprint right. They're going to bluff the quick throw to Moore. She's a little pump, and I don't know how you get that ball off, and I don't know how you put it on the money like that. That is a big-time throw by Matt Corral. If he can continue to do this, we might see the dynamic of the prototypical Rich Rodriguez quarterback change just a little bit. Instead of being a run-first guy who can take hits and be magic with the football, might be pass-first. That one incomplete to Drummond. McClellan with the coverage. And Tommy's definitely got the talent. Uh, I mean, he is a good runner, but that's not his strong yeah. suit. I mean, he could throw the football. He's athletic enough to do what Rich Rod wants him to do, but they're finding a niche here in getting Matt Corral out of the pocket and on the run. He's not a big dude either. 6'1", no. 206. Ole Miss has converted four of six on third down. A long way to go here. Arkansas showing pressure here. They're going to keep it on. Pressure. Corral eludes it on the run, and he finally gets shoved out of bounds. Never pulled the trigger, and Gabe Richardson comes up with the sack. And that's where I need to see Matt Corral take the next step. Early in his career, he did just redshirt last year, but that pressure he sees, your eyes got to go there right away to a quick answer. Watch his eyes. He doesn't see it till the last minute. You got to see that coming sooner so you can have a quick answer and not take a sack. Easier said than done. Did totally. you see pressure in the Grove today? I mean, those kids came right after you. <laughs> You're right. I'm not saying I can do it. I'm just <laughs> yeah. Do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> a little bit different in the Grove <laughs> with a bunch of eight and nine year olds. I just downed a rib. My you know hands were a little slippery. I need a towel out there. Burks takes it at the 15. 
Gets bottled up and he's trying to pop it outside. He's got room to run now. Traylon Burks stutter step to the 30. That was a long run and it turns into a 15 yard return after a 47 yard punt. Let's step away for a timeout here. Ole Miss with an early lead, but Arkansas with some special teams yardage. Arkansas sticks with Ben Hicks, and Hicks swings it up to Devion Warren. Warren picks up a first down. If you're anxious, we got a late flag after the tackle out of bounds against Ole Miss. There is no foul for a late hit out of bounds. There is no foul. Second down. There you go. Correction. First down. First down. Yep. Ye <laughs> yeah, 10 didn't get him, but 8, C.J. Miller may have given him a little love tap. So Ben Hicks has started this game only 4 of 8 for 22 yards. But is he running the offense efficiently enough in other ways? He's running it efficiently, but but what are we not getting? The throws down the field. We're not stretching the field, and we can run the football like Arkansas can with Boyd. you got to be able to play action and push the ball downfield. And they're going to reverse it. Hicks wants to throw it. He gets pressured and dropped. And Ole Miss able to take it down again. The Wild Hog has run into some issues. That time, the issues were named Ryder Anderson and Jacquez Jones. Try to do a little reverse here. They want to get Hicks the ball and really throw this one downfield. But you're going to see that route get caught up, never gets there. There's pressure in the backfield. And Hicks has absolutely nowhere to go with the ball. The junior from Katy, Texas, Ryder Anderson, had a strong game against Memphis last week with a key play. It leaves second and 18. Hicks, flush from the pocket again. On the run, wide open, Arkansas first down, Mike Woods. And Woods takes it to the 20, a gain of 31. And this is a great job by Ben Hicks. When we ask Chad Morris, what's the number one trait you're looking for in a quarterback? A guy that can extend plays with his legs, keeps the play alive, gets his eyes back downfield, and finds Woods wide open. Back to live action. Left side, Rakeem Boyd taken down by Coatney. Quick injury update for Ole Miss fellas. Inside linebacker Momo Sonogo ruled out of this game by the officials down here on the sideline from Ole Miss. A right ankle sprain, the reason. Devastating loss. He had four tackles, but the leader of that defensive team last week against Memphis. Hicks will split out again. And they overload the line to the right side. Boyd runs it that way. That's the part of his game that I thought showed up. It's only been one game. They played Portland State last week, fellas. But that's the part of Rakeem Boyd's game that I feel looks a little bit different this year. He seems to run with a little extra power. Added about eight or nine pounds in the offseason. So he is heavier. But seems to be more willing to take on that contact and finish forward. Third down eight for Ben Hicks and company. Four man rush. And we got no flag on the outside, but Cheyenne O'Grady got tangled up with Armani Linton. Came back to the exact same play they ran before the timeout. They wanted to get Cheyenne O'Grady matched up on a safety. If he turns this corner, little, co I mean, so that's got to be a flag right there. I, mean, I know I'm an offensive guy, but if that hand's not there, he turns that corner, and that could be a touchdown. That's the matchup they wanted, a safety on Cheyenne O'Grady. They got it. It's a little contact. You know, SEC has that Twitter feed now. Here's Connor Lippert to attempt a 37-yard field goal. And the lefty with a knuckleball with a doink that goes through. Able to glance on the inside of the post and over the crossbar. He'll take it. How about this one? 
Not a double doink, just a single. <laughs> hey, it's good. That's three points no matter what. Laces out, Lindsey. Oh, security guard's got to come down with that Yeah, one. you got to make a play. You got to make that catch. Jerry and Ely back for Ole Miss. The lefty Lippert with a line drive this time through Ely's hands, and it will be a touchback. How fast is the game moving from Matt Corral here the first two it's weeks? It's still moving fast. I mean, we think of, his, of him as a veteran in some ways, but his first real significant start and pressure was last week. Wow, what a look to find Elijah Moore. It's a 15-yard strike. I'm right here down behind him. I'm not sure he ever did look. I mean, it almost looked like one of those Pat Mahomes no-look passes, fellas. And again, rolling to the right. Making a living on that tonight. Scotty Phillips straight ahead. Bumper pool with the tackle. No chalk needed. Gain a nine. Great push up front there for Ole Miss that time. Rare sight so far in this game to see Arkansas on that four down. They've been bare, and Ole Miss is at a tough time in the trenches. On second and short, Corral finally gets Corral, but after he picks up five and a first down. This Ole Miss offense right now just hitting on all cylinders. It's been the running from Matt Corral and the throwing outside the pocket. Creating positive plays after positive plays and allowing the tempo. Corral the check to the sideline. He's going to roll right again. This is a run all the way. And he cuts it back inside. Matt Corral in another two. Takes it inside the 10. Who says QBs have to step out of bounds? 23-yard run. And a great play call. We've seen them roll right, roll right, throw right, throw right that time. Scotty Phillips, the running back, was the lead blocker for Corral. And it's a little bit of the wiggle he has. He's not a Pat White like Rich Rodriguez has had in the past, but he can do enough with his feet. Rich Rod has had some runners. Denard Robinson never tied his shoes, but they never caught him either. Here's first and goal. Corral hangs it, hands it off, and Scotty Phillips into the pile. Watch what Matt Corral can do. Look at those hips. Scotty Phillips out in front. Great job of getting a block there. And a great cut by Corral to extend that run. Had a great chat with Matt Corral yesterday. Seems like a quarterback that is confident, but still trying to feel his way around this offense. Second and goal for Matt Corral and Ole Miss. Jonathan Mingo split to the bottom of the screen. Connor and Phillips in the backfield. Scotty Phillips. Taken down for a loss, but a flag. Matt Leffler. Holding. On the offense, number 64. It's a 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's the freshman, Nick Broker, stepping into SEC play. The freshman from Springfield, Illinois. Four star recruit. Number 64 in red. It's tough to teach a young kid. You want him to be aggressive, but sometimes it takes a while to learn when to let those guys go. He's been alternating snaps on the left side with Michael Howard. So they're trying to coach him in between series as much as they can. It's a lot to learn. Second and goal, Matt Corral and Ole Miss. Corral, delayed handoff on the on a running back draw, and Phillips makes it to the original line of scrimmage. And that's going to leave third and goal. Defensive coordinator John Chavis been in the game a long time been in the league a long time back to his playing days at Tennessee Corral pressured set up a screen they get it off to the tight end Pellerin and he gets up in it on a beautiful open field tackle and only a gain of two Monteric Brown better known as Buster Brown came in and took him off his shoes Little misdirection. They're going to pump to the right and try to hit a screen back to the left with just one lineman out in front. 
Open that misdirection pulls Second defenders. Second charge timeout, Arkansas. That's a 30-second timeout. Didn't pull enough defenders that time, but a safe play call to make sure you don't lose field position. Still an easy field goal. Got to get points here before half to go up a score. And so here's a 33-yard attempt. Former Dillon, South Carolina Wildcat, where he was a teammate of Auburn defensive coordinator Kevin Steele. Field goal is good from Luke Logan. And Ole Miss able to take a 10-3 advantage on Arkansas. And the Hogs will have a chance to get their offense going coming out of the locker room. Let's go down to the sideline. Cole standing by with Coach Luke. How much easier does that make your message in halftime coming away with no points there right before the half? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big stop from the defense. It's a four-quarter game. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Just got to keep fighting. What does it do, not for, only for your offense, but your entire football team, when Matt Corral is able to ad-lib and make some of the wacky plays that he does? Well, he looks much more comfortable tonight. We have a couple of red zone penalties, uh, pass interference, and a, and a holding call in the red zone, but he looks much more comfortable. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thanks. I right, call thanks. Arkansas get the ball in the second half. Interesting one and what feels like a must win for both. Let's take it to the studio with Dari, Chiz, and Doring. It's a close game when these two get together tonight. It is no exception as we head into the second half. It's just a touchdown lead for Ole Miss. Chad Morris's offense hadn't hit its stride yet, but don't blame the quarterback. They've only run for 38 yards in the first half. Meanwhile, on the Ole Miss side, this is a Rebels offense, which is moving behind the dynamic play of their quarterback, Matt Corral. It's a 10-3 lead for Ole Miss over Arkansas. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rodgers. It feels like a must-win game for both of these teams. As you look towards the end of the season, and it feels like either one can win this right now. And it feels like Arkansas needs to get the ground game going. I think the best player on this field is still Rakeem Boyd, just 38 rushing yards. And on the Ole Miss side, Matt Corral is playing like a quarterback that has found his confidence and really is fit a fit for this Rich Rodriguez offense. We've been wondering all night when or if Nick Starkle would get in. Plans from the coaching staff said we'll use him at some point, but so far, all Ben Hicks. This kickoff will check up. And so nothing doing on the return. Let's go down to the sidelines and Cole Kubler. Tom, I spoke with Arkansas head coach Chad Morris coming out of the half. He said they just need one guy to make one play. He feels that's contagious. Therefore, it's going to make change at quarterback. Nick Starkle will start the second half for the Razorbacks. Well, how about that? That's what we were waiting on. I mean, it's interesting because I know you say Nick Starkle can stretch the field with his arm. Does that equate? It's a better success running the ball directly? Absolutely can. If you can force Ole Miss to not have seven, eight guys in the box or at least play the safeties low and get involved in the run game, you're going to be more successful. So we'll see how much early with Nick Starkle they trust him after that interception last week when he came in. Grad transfer from AM graduated in three years after playing for Kevin Sumlin, and he started the opener two years ago in UCLA. His broken ankle led to the biggest blown lead in college football in history. He's a Texas native, an Argyle Ranger out of uh, Liberty High School. Participated in Elite 11 and the opening. And look at this. It was here again today, rocking the Justin Bieber shirt during pregame warm-ups. So lost a job to Kellen Mond. Had a chance to come to Arkansas and stay in the SEC. And last week against Portland State, threw an interception on his first possession working on a short field. This was the look pregame. What do you got on that? Yeah, it's the same shirt I saw you wearing last night, isn't it? Fair. Fair, yeah. Both believers, huh? <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Gives it up, takes a hit, but nothing doing in the run game with Rakeem Boyd. It'll be no gain. And let me tell you, Nick Sarkle just got welcomed to this game rather rudely. He got hit like a bottle of Wonder Bird. I mean, some coaches will teach this. Hey, the QB could keep it. He's a threat, so make him feel it. And he might not do it next time. He might not even think about keeping it, but. Kadir Shepard didn't wrap up, didn't take him down. Clean right in front of the referee. Second down, 15. Play clock at five. Out route complete. That's Trey Knox. A lot of meat left on the bone after that gain of eight. 
can already see the ball jumps out of Nick Starkle's hands. He's accurate. Just got to put everything together with being a field general. Not just being a talented quarterback, but making sure you manage the clock, you get guys lined up, as you see him here, communicating with his offensive line, the protection as it starts to get loud. Well, Miss brings three, and the ball was in, well, it was complete to Burks, but short of the marker. Fourth and one, and the first Nick Starkle possession of the game will fail to pick up a first down. The starter, Ben Hicks, asked him what the quarterback room was like. He said, it's really interesting. It's interesting in many ways, but not the least of which is because they both have very different backgrounds. So they're at the grease board. They're going through the playbook. They both have different ideas of how a play can be successful. And of course, so does their head coach, Chad Morris, and their OC, Joe Craddock. I, I would think quarterback rooms in this day and age when you're competing could be more than interesting. It would be rare for them to be 100% friendly. Absolutely, especially for a guy like Starkle who Got injured when he was the starter. Got beat out, transferred. Got beat out again. I mean, he's a talented quarterback that knows he's good enough to be on the field. Hasn't really put it all together or proved that he can do it yet. So the fact that that quarterback room is healthy and I've been in competitions, it's not easy to do so. That goes a long way for the entire team yeah. and the chemistry within that. That corral was exciting in the first half. The retro freshman quarterback will keep it and make it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. First possession, second half. Grant Morgan playing behind Dijon Harris in to make the stop. Seven carries for 40 yards for Corral. The toss looked a little bit forward, and Scotty Phillips takes it to the right side. But all the quarterbacks Rich Rodriguez has had over the years. Go back to Sean King at Tulane. This is a high energy coach. Woodrow Dantzler at Clemson, Pat White, Denard Robertson, Shoelace, and Khalil Tate, who looked like a Heisman candidate his freshman year at Arizona, slowed by an ankle injury last year. Third and seven over the middle, complete. A tick behind Elijah Moore. Body control to haul it in for 13 yards and a first down. A great job by Matt Corral there of looking to the right side of the field to hold that Mike linebacker and open up a window on the left for Elijah Moore. Corral pulls it back from him. Wants to throw on the run. Intermediate route incomplete. Trying to thread the needle and find Tylen Knight, who's played all over the place for Ole Miss in his career. But great coverage in the secondary by Greg Brooks, Jr. Boy, early on this play, Tylen Knight has a beat. Mailbox him. That's where you put your hand up. You say, throw it up. Doesn't do it. He's a new at receiver. He yep. played running back, played defensive back last year all over the field, but new at receiver. That's one of those you might throw up your hand and hope that Corral sees you and launches it. Pressure coming. Corral will chuck this one out of bounds. May have got him with a face mask because the helmet came off and two flags came flying. Zach Williams, opportunity for defensive snaps here in this half. May have just gifted a first down. Funny part is the fr the pressure was enough because Corral had already decided to throw it away. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Number 50, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Correction 56, 56 on the foul. Yeah, that'll be a face mask. That one almost came off. And eventually, you know, just, yeah, eventually did. Almost looking at his ear hole there. What do you got on the eye black? Tell you what, Matt Corral is one of those guys that plays with a ton of swagger. You don't want to make him angry. 
because I feel like he's one of those guys that plays a little better when he's got a chip on his shoulder or something to prove. Went through a couple different high schools in California. And hands this one off. Playing room on the left side. This is Scotty Phillips. And he is down inside the one-yard line. 21-yard run for Phillips. Great job on the left side of that offensive line. True freshman left tackle, Nick Broker. A great block on the outside to seal that. Phillips does the rest. The ball was really close to breaking the plane. They'll get the snap off. Phillips right side. That one breaks the plane. Right in front of the student section. Second touchdown of the game for Ole Miss. Luke Logan on for the point after. His holder is Mac Brown. Seventeen to three. Ole Miss with the lead. Scotty Phillips carrying the mail for Ole Miss. The senior takes it the final yard after taking it halfway home. Grove was pack, uh, packed pregame. Jordan almost took a kid's head off. Cole devoured every dessert on a table. And the rest of it just sweated. Short kick. Knee was down. Starkel outside. Whoa! Miles Hartsfield just cut Trey Knox in half. And look at this. He's going to come from off the sideline over here somewhere to make this play. They didn't have enough guys on the field. And last second, he runs on goes, oh, OK. It's like coming over the boards in hockey with a late yeah. line change. On second and seven, straight ahead, Boyd. First down, Razorbacks. What's different with Nick Starkle running this offense? I think the ball at times comes out a little quicker. Obviously with a little more velocity, but the ball comes out of his hand quicker and he's got the element to be able to stretch the field, though they haven't used it yet. Boyd looking for room. That's five on first down. Chad Morris told me right after halftime, guys, one of those reasons he doesn't think they've been able to find explosive plays is inability to push the ball down the field. One of the reasons he wanted Nick Starkle to get the start here in the second half. So then do it. I need to see it, right? I mean, you got a guy in, at least take a shot. Sometimes you got to take a shot just to take it. Open up some things underneath in the run game. Open up the quick game. Back up some of those guys that are playing a lot of press coverage here because they're not worried about it. Man free here, safety playing 10 yards off the ball. I'd take a shot. Starkle completes it for a first down and then a late throwdown, and plenty of flags come in. That's a great job by Starkle there. They had vertical routes on the outside, so he's got the option to take a shot, but a little soft coverage on that slot receiver. Takes Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number five on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. John Haynes flag. So good job there by Starkle of not having to push it downfield, just to push it downfield. There's an easy throw, take it, move on. Starkle eight of nine for 50 yards. Oh, lost ball. It's on the ground. Ole Miss says they have it. It was bobbled by Devon Whaley, and the Rebels' Luke Knox comes up with the football. Get ready to see the shark tooth necklace, fellas. It's coming out. Do we need the shark tooth necklace? Is that where we are in life? Who doesn't need a shark tooth necklace? All right, Starkle and Whaley talking about this handoff. That's in the right spot. I mean. That's the thing with these replays. Running backs have to be able to 
open up their hands and take it if it's there, but you got to be deliberate. Have to be deliberate. Didn't close down the ball quick enough that time. It's on the ground. An opportune time for a turnover for Arkansas. Snoop Connor, freshman from Hattiesburg with the carry. Arkansas has not been a come from behind team lately. They've lost 10 consecutive games that they trailed entering the fourth quarter. Second and seven for Corral. Out to Cooley. He makes two miss. Octavius Cooley with a first down run for Ole Miss after the catch. He covers 11. This is just an RPO, a run pass option here. He's going to be reading the backside defensive end. If he pauses, kind of like that third down conversion, this end right here, if he pauses, are you going to outflank him with the tight end? Can hand it off or throw that, makes the right decision. Cooley would make uh, a great goal fighter. A pair of Olays and Ole Miss under the direction of Matt Corral will dance their way to the opposite end. They hold a two-touchdown lead as we head to the fourth quarter. Seventeen to three, Ole Miss with the lead. Corral keeps it. Ooh. He's going to take some hits in this conference if he keeps the ball a lot. And that time, Hayden Henry and Joe Fouché combined to take him down. Yeah, you love the competitive competitiveness, excuse me. Loves to keep the play alive, but you'll learn quick. Those hits start adding up. And it is week two, so you feel fresh, but you gotta protect yourself when you can. This sharp uh, short field, thanks to the Ole Miss takeaway. It was messy. Here's a second and nine now. And Phillips with a first down run. Some trinkets on the sideline. Call show it off. You can have your turnover planks and your turnover number two pencils. Oh, Miss is going with the bling. The shark tooth necklace. Everybody's got a turnover gimmick, right? Ole Miss Rebels, they gave you this at the hotel last night, showed it to the team. Obviously, Knox was able to get it by recovering the fumble just a moment ago. You can see the energy from these guys when they give it out. I know a lot of us think some of these things are silly, but they came straight to get this thing out, and we're really pumped about it. I've never seen a shark tooth necklace like that. Corral, late pitch. And that'll net Ole Miss a couple more yards, and the ball came loose. Arkansas with the takeaway. Cameron Curl with the run back, and the Rebels finally still strutting to the five and a score right through traffic in a 68 yard return whoa the mistake by corral gave arkansas an opportunity in the first touchdown of the game comes on a rumble by curl wow you know what sometimes when the offense isn't getting it going the defense has to step up and make a play that's what you're taught to do. Receiver, stand him up. Strip the ball out when you can, and Curl stripped it out and took it the rest of the way. Can't wait to see the hog tooth necklace. Limpert for the point after. Tusk. I think it's Tusk. Yeah. A giant tusk to the takeaway. Shocker. Arkansas and all Miss coming down to the wire. Corral pitched it late. Cooley got stood up, and he got stripped. Cameron Curl, the junior from San Diego by way of Muskogee, Oklahoma, through traffic and into the end zone eventually. These last four games between these two SEC West teams have come down to the wire four years ago. Arkansas kept Ole Miss from going to Atlanta and playing for the SEC title game. Last year in Little Rock on a cold, rainy night on the hard turf, it came down to the end. Last two years, crazy comebacks. Ely takes it straight ahead. 
Matt Corral's ad lib got it to Cooley on the last offensive play, but then Cooley got stripped. They go with the end around. Elijah Moore popped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a couple. Isn't football a funny game? I mean, the momentum and the confidence just seems to pendulum back and forth, big play after big play. We mentioned it before this game even started that it was the little things, the margin for error is so, so small with these teams. You're driving, you get strips, now all of a sudden, it's a ball game. Corral finds more. And this time he's able to take it forward for a gain of 10. Cameron Curl in on the stop. Cameron's dad, Greg, was in the Navy. Cameron was born in San Diego, then made the way to Oklahoma, where he played his high school ball. And against Portland State last week, his first pick and his first sack. Snoop Connor in the backfield. Also key, he had a targeting foul overturned in that game, so didn't cost him any time this one. Arkansas bringing pressure off the edge here. That'd be bumper pool. Here he comes. Corral lobs it, sideline shot incomplete. We got a flag coming. We also have an official who lost his hat. So we'll see if the receiver was out of bounds before the pass interference was committed. Pass interference on the defense, number four. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Field judge, Heriberto Bonet, with the flag, and he did it without a hat on. You saw him forced out oh. of bounds. That's why the hat came down. That's a bad call. Flag. That's a bad call. I don't see that. Got to let a little bit of contact go on the outside, especially early in that route, and immediately McClellan turned his head and started to play the football. Corral gets dropped at midfield. Second down coming. Remember, Williams had the face mask penalty earlier this half. Key drive for Ole Miss, up a touchdown. Start of the fourth quarter. On second and eight. Connor. Only picks up a few. This is so third and five, what do you draw? That's a situation where I'd love to see Ole Miss take a little more time off the clock. You know, we're in the fourth quarter, you're up a score, you snap that ball with around 20 seconds left. I know you want to push some tempo, but also that clock is your friend. Let it keep ticking. You got an RPO coming? Yeah, you see three receivers to the top of your screen here, so I don't think they're going to get Corral outside the pocket. I'd look for something over the middle of the field. Four rushers, and over the middle, complete. First down and a beautiful move by Elijah Moore. He bends it back inside, and Ole Miss touchdown from Elijah Moore. Second touchdown of the game for the sophomore to St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale. Boy. He is special. Look at this. Nobody over him shows Corral his eyes. It's a great, savvy route because he's supposed to go vertical. He's not supposed to catch the ball there, but sees the void, shows Corral his eyes, and they were on the same page. Going after is good. A five-play, 74-yard drive. Matt Corral and Elijah Mora hook up for the second time tonight. This hookup's going to look good in the morning. 46 yards later, Elijah Moore finds the end zone, and the Rebels extend their advantage. No return for Arkansas. Ole Miss shows pressure. They bring four only. Starkle downfield, caught back shoulder. Beautiful hookup with Cheyenne O'Grady. And you see there a difference offense with that dude on the field. And this is what Starkle can bring to the quarterback position. A laser to the right sideline on the back shoulder, back hip of Cheyenne O'Grady, who they are really glad to have back. Just a little switch route, verticals all across the board. Starkle does a great job of seeing the coverage over the top and putting it on the back hip. 
Starkle again tipped. It is bobbled and it falls to the turf. Missed opportunity. Armani and Linton can't believe, pardon me, Julius can't believe he didn't squeeze it. Keydron Smith, Smith may have knocked it out of his hands. A little miscommunication on routes there. Knox and O'Grady were really close to each other. Starkle was trying to get rid of the ball. And boy, as a quarterback, when you see that ball pop up, hold your breath for a second. Arkansas dodges a bullet. BYU just took the lead on Tennessee in overtime on Rocky Top. Starkle going that same route but opposite side. Over the head of Traylon Burks, the freshman from Warren, Arkansas. Another third long. Last third long, they went four vertical routes. Starkle made a great back shoulder ball. This time they got three receivers and a tight end. There's O'Grady right there. I'd keep an eye on him. Starkle dropped. They beat the right side of the line. Charles Wiley with the sack. It's a loss of nine. And Arkansas is going to have to punt it away. Oh, and this is just not a good job by the right tackle here. Dalton Wagner, he's going to have pressure off the edge. Watch his hands. Never gets extended. Let's him get into his body, and you're not going to win as a tackle if you don't anchor your base and get your arms extended there. Third sack of the night for the Rebels. Sky high punt. Elijah Moore asks for a fair catch. He takes it home amidst a trio of Razorbacks. It's a 32-yard punt. We'll see if Ole Miss will work on the clock. They've certainly worked on the Arkansas quarterbacks. This time, protection drops for Starkle, and he goes down. Let's take a look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Is it fate accompli that it'll be Alabama and Georgia in Atlanta at the end of the season? Well, here's a look at teams in the East. Missouri with a nice bounce back win. Tennessee just scored moments ago in overtime, and they're down one to BYU. They're in danger of starting the season 0-2 for the first time since 1988. I don't think it's going to be the Vols in Atlanta, regardless of if they can pull this one out in OT. Vandy had a hard time covering one of the most dynamic players in college football today. Did they read the scattering report? Rondale Moore, 13 catches, 220 yards in their loss in West Lafayette. At that point, you go not the box in one like basketball. You go box in two there. Just put two <laughs> guys on him and say, you know what? Throw it to anybody else. Anybody. Purdue threw for over 500 yards in a game. That's pretty good. More than I had in the Grove earlier. Yes. Just I don't think you completed a pass hey, in the Grove. Hey, hey, hey. Working with some inexperienced receivers on the outside. They don't quite know the whole offense yet. I haven't seen that many drop passes in the Grove since Chaz was hitting on Becky. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Chaz last night? <laughs> Third and three. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I do. Uh, Arkansas only 5 of 14 on third down. The Ole Miss defense has made some plays. And now let's see if the offense has one in their pocket with Matt Corral out of the shotgun. And they do. This is Snoop Connor. Grab your green hat. We're going streaking. 26-yard gain to pick up the first down and plenty more. I don't care who touches the ball tonight for Ole Miss. It seems like everybody's doing it. If I'm Arkansas, you got to put one more in the box there. Just a seven-man box on a third and short. Snoop Connor, 5A Mr. Football at Hattiesburg High School. Nice pickup. Ole Miss has a loaded backfield. Scotty Phillips, the leader. 
Seven yards for Phillips. Fellas, Matt Luke came over to this group, this, all, this Ole Miss offensive line before this series, questioned their pride, asked them if they had pride, said, show me your pride on this drive in a Marnie R. Rivera type drive for this Ole Miss offensive line here trying to close out this game. Throwing cutters. Is there a Luis Gonzalez on the other side for Arkansas? I don't know, but Ben Johnson was over there. Eli Johnson was over there bleeding from his nose, spitting out of his beard. He was ready to roll. That's that's aggressive. Second and two. Phillips dances behind that line. A hole opens. It's a big one. And Phillips is going to take guys with him all the way into the end zone. A 26-yard physical run for Phillips. Most of that yardage coming after contact. Offensive line opening up holes and the tight ends for Ole Miss huge in the run game. Peller in there with a block that just sprung it. Tight ends have been great for Ole Miss tonight. Outside of that Cooley fumble. Think anybody got my old school reference? Yeah, I, I got it. Everybody's doing it. Uh huh. I didn't know if you got it. I'm glad you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sure. all I care about. With five million dollars that the government knows about. <laughs> Scotty Phillips able to take it the way the rest of the way. His second touchdown of the night. Dari thinks he's getting it done going downfield. He's now 9 of 10 on passes 15 yards or further downfield for 231 and two touchdowns. He's stretching the field. That's ridiculous. 9 of 10 pushing the ball downfield. Big return opportunity for Devion Warren, and he'll give Arkansas fantastic field position. And a flag late. It looks like so an upset on Rocky Top. Tennessee 0-2 for the first time since 1988. BYU goes into Knoxville and knocks him off in overtime. Deep ball, complete, and an Arkansas first down, and the Razorbacks taking advantage of the field position after that penalty, 46 yards to Mike Woods. And really the first time we've seen Arkansas push the ball downfield, that's what Nick Starkle can do. That was a great ball there to Mike Woods. Get this drive started. Pressure in the backfield, wow. Chase Hayden finally gets a chance to carry the football, and Benito Jones says, hello, Mr. Hayden. I'd like to meet you. This is what got him deep. Yeah, and it's, it's not the best ball, but you know what? He lets Woods go up and compete for it. Gets the drive started. What I don't like about that last play, they've run that set almost every time exclusively and handed the ball off. Stacked slots wide. Ole Miss is catching on. Tipped and incomplete. Trying to find C.J. O'Grady. O'Grady wasn't ready for that one. Skipped off his shoulder pad before he even had his head turned. Two down territory here for sure. Don't have to get it all. Don't be surprised if they try to get something in that five to ten yard range in space. See if they can pick up 12 yards or so. Arkansas has a 10-game losing streak when trailing, entering the fourth quarter. Down three touchdowns here with five and a half to go. Starkle sideline shot up the hand of O'Grady. And a finger wag from Armani Linton. That's a good ball. Little hand fight there for Cheyenne O'Grady. Wasn't able to get the second one up. Similar to the play they ran where I thought there should have been pass interference at the other side of the field earlier in the game. Now they gotta have it here. Fourth and 16. If Arkansas has a comeback in them, gotta start now. Incomplete. No flag in the Rebels turn of Omar on downs. Miles Hartsfield will strut off the field for the Landshark defense. 
this. Oof, what is Jeremy Pruitt going to do in Knoxville? And we knew it was a rebuild. They didn't have any talent on that roster last year, but Pruitt's done a great job in recruiting, especially on the offensive line, getting some big bodies in there. Added a few in the transfer, transfer portal. I thought they would be primed to take a step, not a huge step this year, but a step in the right direction. And it looks like they've taken a big one backwards. Cole, Tennessee's got Chattanooga next. Then they go to Florida and Georgia. How hot will the heat get on Jeremy Pruitt? You're going to hear a lot about it. And I think when you take a look at the next two games after that as well, Tom, I'm not confident they can find a way to win those. I mean, a 1-6, 1-7 start for Tennessee is very possible. Whew. There are some teams that had terrible losses week one. They were able to bounce back week two. You can look towards Willie Taggart and Florida State. It was good that they were able to hold on in overtime today. Missouri open with a loss up in Laramie. Bounced back in a big way today. And Ole Miss, they won a terrible loss, but their offense didn't show up last week in Memphis. And now they get to reclaim momentum. And if you're a coaching staff, you can say, hey, listen, we're still on target to reach a lot of our goals won't be the case for Tennessee and the heat's gonna get turned up big time on that coaching staff man that's one place where it's real loud outside the stadium I'd have to burn some sage. <laughs> Three and a half to go in this one. Arkansas change quarterbacks at the half. AM transfer Nick Starkle is able to find the edge. Do you see Nick Starkle staying in a starting, uh, since he started the second half, I will say staying in a starting role next week for Arkansas? I think so. I mean, I think you've seen what this offense needs. It, it needs the vertical threat throwing the football. And, and yes, Starkle is a step behind. Rightfully so where Ben Hicks is in running this offense and getting these young players lined up and running with the tempo But he is more talented. He's better pushing the fall the ball to perimeter throws like that He's better pushing it downfield and you're gonna major at Arkansas and running the football with Rakeem Boyd and threatening if if at least throwing the football downfield so I think Starkle's in here right now. I think this coaching staff wants to see him just operate the offense. I'll, I'll open this question up to both of you. Now let's start with Jordan. Where have you seen Arkansas improve over the last year in two games? I think it's boy. I'll on the defensive <laughs> side of the ball, I will say, let me start on the defensive side of the ball. I think they have more talent. I think they have a better understanding of the scheme that John Chavis wants to have and I think they've recruited the bodies that are going to fit his defense now on the offensive side of the ball they need more talent on the perimeter they've recruited that and they have some but it's going to be you know towards the end of the year until we see if there's enough talent on the outside to complement what Rakeem Boyd is and the talent they have in the backfield they're able to convert this one to Traylon Burks Cole where have you seen or have you seen improvement from Arkansas over the last year plus two. I agree about up front on defense. The loss of Dorian Gerald was big because I, I, I thought he had a really nice game against Portland State. And I do think the offensive line has actually played better the last two weeks than they did the majority of last season. They went through three different quarterbacks last season. Connor Nolan is still at Arkansas, but he'll be a pitcher exclusively for the Arkansas baseball team. And again, the baseball coach, Dave Van Horn, they're really excited because they think Connor Nolan could be an elite pitcher and stepping away for football will allow him to add velocity to what could be a big league fastball. And that's time obviously time. Yeah, that's obviously the most improved position. But what does that mean if you can't improve around the quarterback? I think that's where we're starting to understand does the offensive line come together? Does the talent on the outside to come together with the loss of Deion Stewart before this season? He was your best receiver. Now it's a lot of young talent on that out there. Offense has got to be balanced. Other two quarterbacks last year transferred out. Ty Story now at Western Kentucky. Cole Kelly at Southeastern Louisiana. 
Completion over the middle. Still running with it is Trey Knox after taking a big lick. And slow to get up after a gain of 26. Arkansas is still fighting. And to me, I see that an area of improvement for Arkansas. This is a team, last year when Chad Morris came in, he was trying to placate some upperclassmen while getting experience for the freshmen. It didn't work out for anybody. And now this is a team that they're not going to come out of here with a win, but they're still battling late in this one. And a catch in the back corner of the end zone for a touchdown by Coylan Jackson. And again, it, it, it doesn't mean a ton. That touchdown right there, that drive, but the, the comeback throw to the right sideline, the deep seam route right there to set up this fade route, those are throws that I'm not so sure Hicks has in his bag that Starkle definitely does. Connor Limpert with the point after. Nick Starkle on that drive, seven for seven. For 81 yards and a touchdown. Two grad transfer quarterbacks. College football has been taken over by grad transfers at quarterback this season. And the numbers today. Starkle exclusively in the second half. Hicks exclusively in the first half. The NCAA study said in 2013 there were 58 grad transfers. In 2018, 116. Wow. Onside opportunity. And that one will kick out of bounds and belong to Ole Miss. And they are. How about Matt Corral? He was dynamic tonight. I mean, the kid can play. I think the more he starts to get confidence in himself, the more Rich Rod understands how to call a game for Matt Corral, what he can do best. This Ole Miss team is going to continue to get better. Matt Corral picks up his first win as a starter here at Ole Miss. A 31 to 17 final. He threw for 246 and two touchdowns. He averaged four and a half yards a carry on 10 carries. Let's go down to the field. Cole standing by with head coach Matt Luke of Ole Miss. Coach Luke, before your team put this game away, I saw you come to the bench. Individually, you challenged your offensive lineman. You said, do you have pride? If you do, show it to me. They went out and closed that game for you. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. This is a great job, our players and our staff, getting the ball to Matt. And uh, it's great. Our, our crowd showed up tonight. Uh, just so proud of our guys and our staff. What does Matt do for your football team from an energy level that he brings to them? Uh, he just, uh, man, he just, he's a competitor. He plays with that fire. I think people rally around that. He looked much more comfortable tonight, and he's only going to get better. You lose one of your leaders on defense in the first series of the game. They're still able to bounce back and get big stops. I had to help your confidence tonight. Well, I was so proud of our guys coming off the sideline. All say, hey, man, we got you. We got you. We're going to win this one for you. So we really, really love the team effort right there. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Howdy, toddy. A big improvement for Corral. Last week against Memphis, just 93 yards to the air. Tonight, 246 in Ole Miss with a 31-17 victory on this SEC Saturday night. Let's get you back to the studio to recap all the action, including Texas and LSU. Dari, Chiz, and Doring. Boys, all yours.